Welcome back to Tech Yes City, and here we have the drive here. We'll get the gist of this review out of the way first. It's a simple two terabyte drive. There's also other flavors available, one terabyte and 500 gigabytes, also 250 and 120. And those drives, the one we got here is the two terabyte drive. So I'm gonna be talking about this today. This comes in at just under 800 USD and in Australia, just over a thousand AUD. So it's a very expensive drive. And with that price tag, you would expect exceptional performance. And it's a good thing that this thing does perform exceptionally well out of the box. However, the weirdest thing is about this drive is of course consistency. The one terabyte AS SSD does come very close to the advertised box speeds. And in fact, it's getting so close to saturating the maximum speeds available on PCIe 3.0 X4. Uh, going on the read speeds going up to around about 2800 megabytes per second and then on the write speeds 2500 megabytes per second however this is only with a one gigabyte test over AS SSD. when we test the 10 gigabyte variant in the tests involved we see that not only did the iops drop and they were incredible they were going near 500,000, they dropped to around about 300,000 when you put a 10 gigabyte stress test through it and not only that the speeds on the right side of things do drop significantly too so furthermore, I decided to put it through my very hard hitting 100 gigabyte transfer test with mixed data patterns. And this is when I realized something was a little bit off with this drive. After about 44 gigabytes of transfer, the write speeds tank to near half that of what they originally were. Now this is probably due to Samsung introducing what they call turbo write, and they do promise up to 72 gigabytes on this variant, the two terabyte Evo. However, after 44 gigabytes, as I said in this test in HD Tune Pro, the scores were actually um, a lot worse than 72 gigabytes, it was dropping at 44 gigabytes. So the consistency of this drive is a little bit off. And now this is actually very important when it comes to an NVMe drive. If it was an entry level SSD for the consumer, a very cheap budget drive, I wouldn't care so much, but this is an NVMe solution that people are buying for productivity. They're buying in a professional work environment and it needs to have consistent speeds. Samsung, I would much rather see you drop those initial burst speeds and somehow look for a way to flatline those write speeds so they're consistent all day, every day. Especially if you're someone like me who edits 4K videos and one video project can have easily over 100 gigabytes of storage to deal with. And that's the advantage of using an NVMe drive as a scratch drive. It's very fast, it's very efficient. However, that being said, the speeds that it throttles to is still well over that of a gigabyte per second. So it is very fast to begin with. When we compare it to the MP500 drive from Corsair, it does still score better even when it's throttled. Uh, keep in mind though, the Corsair MP500 is still a very consistent drive. And keep in mind the Corsair MP500 is actually more expensive at current market rate prices on, at least on Amazon. So it is quite a compelling option, the Samsung 970 Evo, even when it's throttled. Uh, also with the warranty, it is pretty impressive. You do get a five year warranty with the 970 and also 1,200 terabytes written for endurance. There's also encryption support, as well as their software, the magician software, and also the cloning software, which in practice does work extremely well, especially the cloning side of things from Clonix Software. This does an excellent job if you wanna quickly get your old hard drive transferred to the new SSD and enjoy those faster speeds. Now moving on to the temperature test. I test with a thermal image camera and also test with the software itself. The Ida64 and also the thermal imaging camera results were a little bit better when the sticker was pulled off. Now I have seen heavy stickers being implemented on the MP500, for example, where they do work efficiently well, not only for branding, but also to dissipate heat. This sticker, however, I believe is just insulating heat. So it's not actually optimal to have this sticker on if you want the best performance with your drive. But anyway, back to the hardware and the package itself. When you get this drive, it's just in a little simple package. It's encased pretty well. And then moving on with the hardware, they do have their own in-house Phoenix controller and they are using 64 layer VNAN flash. This does enable them to double the storage capacity from previously one terabyte to now two terabytes of storage. So it is actually a very small drive packing a big punch. But of course they are using TLC memory as opposed to the pro version, which does use MLC based flash. So if you are to get those consistent speeds, then you may wish to step it up to the pro variant. Of course, there are other competitors that are coming into the field that are using MLC flash. So it may wanna consider those if you want better value for money. Samsung have always had that premium speed at that slightly premium price. 
So here we are with the conclusion. The Samsung is a very fast drive, even before and after throttling. Of course, I don't like throttling. If it's something that Samsung needs to work on, it's getting their consistency right, especially on an NVMe drive. Definitely when it all comes down to it, five year warranty, just under $800 for two terabytes of really fast NVMe storage, really good uh, additional software to boot and also in Australia, just over a thousand AUD. It is one of those drives that will suit you very well if you need those fast transfer speeds and you also need that peace of mind with the five year warranty. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button and I look forward to catching you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye.